That makes two of us. That makes two of us. Oh, very cool. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I did the uh the KPA on him. Super nice guy. Uh humble. Does have a full time job, but I told him, you know, hey, <clears throat> you know, we're definitely looking. Um we can definitely put you on a team, but you got to understand, you got to know how to juggle and balance, you know, your work and also real estate. But he's super stoked and he really wants to uh, do it. So I recommended him to uh, reach out to you. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you much. OK, where's my presentation and welcome everyone on Zoom. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to be going over the uh, process to register your listing. On the, uh, on the MLS. This is a general session. And the reason I wanted to uh, dive deep into this conversation is because a lot of agents, unfortunately, and if you can please put yourself on mute, I'm gonna do it myself, one second. Now we can't hear you, Simon. <laughs> All right, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Beautiful, sorry about that. Yes, we can. Good morning, Simon. Hi, good morning. Good morning, thank you so much for being on the call. Okay, so again, the initial process of registering your uh, listing, you know, and back in the day, it, there used to be as soon as you would open up the MLS, there was a section there that says if you wanted to register the uh, listing that has been removed already. I'm going to show you based on the slide, where do you need to go in order for you to register a property? Okay, so let's go ahead and dive deep into this process. Here we go. So what is a, a registered listing? <clears throat> so a registered listing is, is the, per, the process in which uh, you exclude a listing from the MLS. It's when it's available through uh, CRMLS and it's been since uh, 2020. Rules that the MLS and they're really cracking down on a lot of the agents is these coming soon uh, transactions or listings that are off market. When you're promoting a property and you don't have it either registered or you don't have a listing agreement. Now, you know, who are the biggest people that are putting these complaints? Are the agents. The agents are the ones that are initiating these complaints. And now they're sending these information to the MLS. And the MLS is now identifying the agent and reaching out both the broker and also the agent to say, hey, you have a listing agreement in place. So CRMLS Rule 7.8 uh, mandatory submission requires the listing broker to submit their listing to the MLS within two days of the effective date of the listing contract. Okay, what is the listing contract, right? It's the time when you initiate the listing agreement with the, uh, with the principal sellers, right? You have the listing, you have it executed, you have 40, uh, 48 hours to input it into the MLS. If you're not going to put it on the MLS, then what should you do, right? Which is the seller excluding it from the MLS, right? That's the sound form that you need to provide. If you're gonna put it as a coming soon, you can input it as a coming soon. That allows you 21 days to have it as a coming soon before it actually becomes inactive. Now, I wanna also uh, keep this in, in mind that a coming soon, there's no modifications meaning you cannot put it on hold and think that it's going to hold and then you can go back again and it's still going to give you the extra time to have the uh, 21 days. No, it's 21 days exactly on the 22nd. If you don't put it active prior, it's going to automatically put it as an active uh, active listing. Make sense? Okay. It doesn't matter. It's straight 21 days. That is correct. Yeah. So the register process in CRMLS allows the agent and the uh, broker to submit <clears throat> the listing contract to the MLS. 
and the compliance rule of 7A without having to file the exclusive or the waiver, right? If you register the property, then you're okay. A lot of agents, unfortunately, do not know that you can register the prop or the uh, listing. This is the reason MR, uh, CRMLS is really cracking down on the agents to make sure that you understand it. I was just involved in a arbitration um, you know, case, and it was an eye opener for me as well, because again, I rely on the sources of CRMLS. I'm not technically looking at this on a regular basis to see you know, what are the do's and don'ts, right? And there's a lot of information with CRMLS. You know, they'll say, go to compliance or, you know, read this uh, this page on uh, on the MLS regarding, you know, the do's and don'ts. And it's still overwhelming. Even for me as a broker, I catch myself where I still call compliance. The good thing for me is that when I call compliance, I have a dedicated number where it allows us because in the past we had to submit our email request saying, hey, I have questions regarding you know, compliance and how the process works, right? Now, there was a lot of voices with uh, brokers saying, listen, there has to be a better process for us brokers that you know run big offices or small brokerages that we can speak with someone in compliance to get our answers answered. So now they gave us a dedicated number where we can actually speak with compliance because in the past, we couldn't even speak. We had to send an email. You can talk to CRMLS and you can talk to a representative, but you were not able to talk to compliance. And it was like so confusing. They would say this and then they would say that. And it was like, wait a minute, you know what? I'm I'm confused. So imagine if as the brokers confused, what are the agents, you know, gonna be able to handle that? So that was the reason, you know, uh, CRMLS uh dedicated a um a direct line where we can actually speak with compliance. And guess what? Even compliance doesn't even know sometimes the answer. <laughs> so, yeah. The board. No, not the board. I'm just, that is correct. Thank you, Tammy. So I'm only emphasizing not the board, <laughs> only the MLS, only the MLS, okay? So registering the listings are not on the MLS. Therefore, listings are uneligible for public marketing. So remember, if you have a listing that you know you're going to have, right, but you don't have a listing agreement in place, you cannot promote it. You cannot advertise. You, okay. There's agents out there that are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so... We want to we want to emphasize even small small advertisements can also cause a violation, right? And it only takes one person to reach out to CRMLS saying, "Hey, we have this individual agent that has uh, marketing and is promoting a property. I did not see it on the MLS." So what does MLS do? They do a little bit of research. They know they identify the agent, and then they'll send out an email to the agent. Hey, we want to know about you know, one, two, three, ABC street, you know, do you have a listing agreement in place? And this is where they open it up and now you're in violation. And the fines are very expensive guys too. You know, it can be up to, you know, up to thousands of dollars. Uh, one of the cases that uh, we were in, in involved was uh, $5,000 that uh, we saw as a, as a, as a fine. You know, the good thing they reversed it because they didn't really see any violation after doing some investigations, but still, it it just it's just a reminder that we need to be very diligent in our approach and uh and the process and being very cautious in how you start promoting. And I know all of us, you know, we want to be ahead of the game and we want to be proactive, right, and uh, get as many eyes on this property. But you got to follow the process because there's other people. That, that are looking at the MLS as well, or looking at your information as well. So this is why it's very vital and uh, crucial that you follow the rules. Otherwise you're gonna be in a sticky situation. Yes. So, um, and I apologize. You mentioned this, I missed it. Yeah. So these rules are going to require the licenses who belong to the CR model system. That is correct. So, yeah. So technically, I could if I could walk, it's still market property. Yeah. So these are, and that's a very good point, uh, Brandon. A hundred percent. 
if you're not a member of a of a board, then you know it doesn't really apply. How are they going to you know put a violation? They can't force anything if you're not a member. But the reason you want to be a member is because you have access to not just the MLS, but you have access to other tools. Yeah, I just think it's a term though. So many wholesalers are out there now. So many. Right. Some of them are mixed. Right. Yeah. So it sounds like what they're doing is that they get a notification of a violation. They do some research. They just don't blatantly send out the Instagram or whatever. They're That's correct. First of all, finding out the information is for the MLS, and then they go. That's right. Yeah. 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 So. And and you think you know is that is that fair right? Well, if you're not a member of a local board, you know how can they really you know you know penalize you right? <clears throat> and it's and it's not fair for the ones that are actually members of a local board and you know they're putting these fines. But it's so that it's uniform across the board that we're all doing you know the right things and ethical because there's a lot of agents like you said, Brandon that unfortunately are just trying to double end it. They're just trying to identify the buyer before it even hits the uh, the active market, right? That's the intention of why uh, the MLS is trying to stop that. Okay. Is this is the reason, because it may be a property that, you know, their buyers really want, but because they were not able to see it on the MLS, it's like defeats a purpose. Why am I paying for the MLS? Yeah, exactly. So good point. The listings are ineligible for public marketing. The listing broker does not publish, uh, publicize an offer com of commission. Days on market do not count. The listing broker and their agents can only give showing to the uh, broker's own client. So what is the uh, what is the difference? Uh, CRMLS has improved the process you can use to exclude a listing by using a registered process. You no longer need to uh, submit a copy of the exclusive form to MLS. Like listing your exclusive form on the MLS listing and register do not appear on the MLS. The MLS also does not distribute them anywhere. Okay. It is the seller's decision if and how long to exclude the uh, property from the MLS and the MLS has retired the exclusive listing title on your dashboard, okay? So <clears throat> again, just the, the initial process. And here is uh, a little information. Seller signs a listing contract, right? If the property is never marketed, the listing does not need to go into coming soon or active, okay? 2A, listing broker has two days from the effective listing day to input the listing into the MLS as a register or as a coming soon or as active. Within one business days of marketing the property, the listing broker must ensure the listing is coming soon or active. Okay, so do we understand the initial process, right? You meet with the sellers, you go in through your listing presentation. They like everything that you have. You have a listing agreement in place. They're ready to execute. Does that start the initial process? The answer is yes. If you have an executed listing agreement at the time that you meet, right? But what happens if you um, meet with the client, but they're not ready to sign, you leave the paperwork there. Does that mean that we need to put the uh, property on the MLS? The answer is no, right? Because we don't have a, a, a signed listing agreement. Even if it's, you know, a week from now, two weeks from now, you know, we may have to revise it, maybe update the uh, date. It's from the time that you have the listing agreement signed and executed that starts the uh, days on time to uh, put it on the market, either as a register, as a coming soon, or as an active active uh, listing. Okay, pretty pretty self-explanatory. So register is totally different than than a coming soon. A coming soon is 20, 21 days, Brandon. So, to you guys understand this best. So, you be the seller's buyer. You have no problem signing a listing agreement with me. But the privacy is a concern. You don't want to sign. You don't want it to be MLS. Uh, I don't And I have a six month listing agreement. I'm going to register and prove just like the seller is required. But that means I also have to go live. 
That is correct. Yes. Yes. That's to protect you from anyone coming back to complain because if they call and say, hey, <clears throat> somehow, some way I found out that this agent has a property and it's promoting it, whatever, right? Well, maybe it's to a certain small group of people that they have connections with, but they get a hold of the address. This individual agent reaches out to Sierra Melez, calls and says, hey, I'm calling regarding this property. I think it's in violation. Well, Sierra Melez is going to identify, no, Brandon registered this listing, so he's okay. So could you share with us a scenario like that to help us sell the property? Yeah, so the best practice is obviously, in my opinion, is like if you know 100% that you're going to either put it as a coming soon or as an active listing, that's going to be the best policy, right? Because even let's say that they're not ready right this minute, then don't have them sign the listing agreement then. Just say, look, when we're ready to put this property active or coming soon, then we'll go ahead and sign it. Because remember, as soon as you put the listing, sign and execute it, that starts everything. So in this scenario, so let's just say the seller is saying, I don't want this in the MLS, and I don't need to work with them. Sure. So if I were to do an open house or run a social post and I disclaimer that said, property is still registered in CRMLS, it's just not. That's right. Yeah, so then that's where you would actually get in. There's a form on CRMLS, or excuse me, on the zip forms, which is the uh, sell form, right? The seller excluding the listing from the MLS. And there is a checklist of items that you can say that this listing will ultimately become active in the future or it will never hit the market. But that's your proof that you were instructed by the seller not to put it on the MLS. And then that holds us you know, accountable to our position, but it also avoids us from getting penalized with CRMLS because now we have a document that says, no, the sellers have instructed me as the agent not to put it on the MLS. Here's the form signed and executed by them, but you still would have to register so you can protect yourself if MLS says, well, let me see the uh, timelines of what you ended up doing. Because remember, as soon as you, you sign the listing agreement, then immediately within two days, you must put it on the MLS. That's where the clear, the uh, clear cooperation policy comes into into effect. Does that make sense? Yeah. I know it's a little confusing. So yes, sir. Are you well, are you using the cheap loan? Yeah, the cheap loan. Repeat your question. I'm sorry. Listing. Yeah, so I just Yeah, okay. So we're we're having a different conversation when it comes to commercial. Even commercials, right? If you're a member of the of the local board, you have to be in compliance. So even though you have a commercial listing, remember the MLS also has commercial listings in there as well. So yes, you would have to register. Yes, you can put it as a coming soon or yes, you put it active, but you can still use third party such as Crexy, LoopNet, CoStar to add more exposure to your property than yes. But you still would have to go through CRMLS if you're a member. Now, there's a lot of commercial agents that are not member of a, of a local board. They're, they're just not, you know, because they don't do residential. So those individual agents do not comply, but they don't put stuff on the MLS. They use CoStar, LoopNet, Crixi, and other uh, commercial platforms. Yes, sir. In that same scenario, he doesn't want to put it in the MLS. He still needs to register it. That is correct. Yes. Yes, as long as you're a member and you're not going to put it on, on CRMLS, you have to register to protect yourself from anyone coming back and saying, we have registered, but it's a commercial. I was instructed by my clients not to put it on CRMLS, but we're using third-party uh, uh, other websites, okay? 
<laughs> All right. So number one, who? The public. Public, anyone who has not signed the uh, AD form with the listing broker within the last year or, or is not an agent underneath the same designated broker. Okay. Marketing defined, right? And then what? Zillow, Realtors.com, and so on and so forth. Right? So the, the whole purpose, again, is to, you know, identify because uh, I get a lot of a lot of questions regarding you know can we can we market a property if we if we don't have a listing agreement in place and what do you think my answer is no no okay because it only takes one agent to uh, file a complaint and then that opens up a can of worm right you want you're you're working it backwards what you need to do is make sure you have a legitimate listing agreement in place if it's you know a single family duplex triplex uh, fourplex commercial um, land, business opportunities, whatever the case is, you need to have a listing agreement signed and executed, right? I'll share a story with uh, with an agent that happened many, many, many years ago. Um, he got a call from uh, from an individual saying, "Hey, I uh, I want to I want to sell my property." It was in in uh, Redondo Beach, and he says, "Okay, you know, how soon do you want to uh, meet?" He says, I, "We don't have to meet." You can go ahead and uh, send me the paperwork, but I need you to put it on the MLS ASAP. So the agent said, okay, so you want me to put the property? I need it. We'll take photos and all that. So yeah, sure. You can come today or you can come tomorrow. So he ended up going, he ended up getting uh, you know, photography on the property and um, still didn't have the listing agreement signed. He ended up putting the listing on the MLS. Okay. I get a call two days later from a female saying, hey, my name is so-and-so. The property that your agent um, has on the MLS, that's my property. I never gave authorization. On top of that, by the way, my ex-husband and I are getting a divorce. We separate it. Uh, I never gave you any authorization or authority, or I never signed anything. Why is this property on the MLS? I need you to take it out immediately. By the way, I'm also an attorney. <laughs> oh my gosh. So one thing after another thing after another thing. So I immediately called the uh, agent. I says, dude, what's going on? Yeah, well, I, I got the uh, I got the signature from the uh, husband, but he kept ensuring me that he was going to get the, uh, the wife to sign. Well, you never got the wife to sign. You put it on the MLS. And ultimately, we don't have a valid agreement. We need to cancel it. And I had to, uh, I needed, I needed to officially cancel because we really did not have a listing agreement in place. Yes, Brandon. So, Simon, is that, is that, does that pertain to the exclusive listing only or any listing? Uh, what do you mean? I'm not sure. As far as, like, I mean, we're to have a one party listing, it's still required to register. I mean, what if you're not, you still going to be the same market regardless of the listing agreement itself. That is correct. Yeah. So, and I, I want to make sure. Yeah. Even if it's a five day listing. Yeah. We have to go through the channels and the protocol, unfortunately. Yeah. But that's a good point. What if it's like a for sale by owner? Right. Yeah. And uh, so let me, let me give you a concept and that's a, that's a good segue. Thank you for uh, bringing that up, uh, Brandon. So let's say that you're prospecting as an example, right? You're door knocking. You happen to see a sign that says a for sale by owner, right? You go and introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Simon with Keller Williams. I noticed the sign here that you're selling your home. You know, uh, can you tell me a little bit about the property? Yeah, the property is, you know, three bedrooms, two bad. Da, 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 da. I said, wonderful. Um, are you uh, are you paying a commission if I bring you a ready, willing, and able buyer? Well, that's the reason I'm selling it on my own. I'm not um, I'm not uh, paying a commission. That's why I'm trying to do it myself. I says, okay, I completely understand. Um, can I promote the property, right? To try to get buyers, right? So what is your position? One, you don't have a listing agreement. Two, the seller is saying, yeah, you know what? If you want to want to find me a buyer, that's fine. But the buyer is going to have to pay you a commission, right? What's your position when that situation happens on a for sale by owner? You don't have a listing agreement signed. The seller is telling you, you do whatever you need to do. What's your what's your position? Can you market the property? No. Tammy, Tammy says no. Anyone on Zoom, what's your thoughts on that? 
Okay. <laughs> okay, so the answer is no, you can't. One, you don't have a listing agreement in place, even though the seller says you could. It's a fine line. It's a very sticky situation, in my opinion. Because remember, ultimately what's going to happen if you're promoting and marketing a property that you don't have a listing agreement, no one knows that their intentions or people's intentions and mindset is you have that listing, you're trying to find a buyer, which in this case you really are, but you don't have a listing agreement. So you're going to, you're really going to have uh, the situation where you're going to be caught with your pants down. I hate to say it that way, but the reality is that might be a fine. Because CRMLS is going to say, well, why are you promoting a property? And you can go through the motions and explain it. This was a for sale by owner. This was a situation that the seller gave me the authorization to market it. The seller is not paying me a commission. It's the buyer, but it's still a fine line, in my opinion. I haven't, I haven't uh, uh, been in a situation that I've heard of that type of scenario, what happens to the agent if they are caught with the violation. But I can tell you, I mean, the black and white is you probably shouldn't be doing it if you are a member of a local board, in my opinion. OK, again, it, it may go in a different way, but I don't I just don't know what you need to do. Register the property, maybe register the property saying, look, I'm just registering and then just putting some footnotes in there saying that this is a for sale by owner. I'm just trying to promote it to try to find buyers on it. But I, I would think it's still a little bit of a risk factor, in my opinion. Just my opinion. You know, uh, it's like, I don't know if I want to poke that bear, right? Uh, so it's just one of those uh, very unique situations, in my opinion. All right, so the uh, the differences between registered and coming soon listings, right? Here it is, guys, in, in black and white, right? So registered is no public marketing, no public marketing not displayed in the MLS, no commission offered, no commission offered, no DOM stands for days on market, no uh, distribution through the MLS, uh, showing only to listing broker clients, form required, okay? So this is when you register a property on the MLS, then you cannot uh, do no public uh, marketing, okay? You cannot uh, display it on the MLS as a registered uh, listing, no commissions offer and so on and so forth. Who can see registered listings, listing agents, listing brokers, office managers, and the MLS staff? Okay. Yes, Tammy. I, I would say yes, because I think it falls under the broker and the broker obviously has agents, so in theory, in my opinion, I think, yes, you can. You can distribute and say it in front of your office. Mm -hmm. I would caution you, I, I would I, I would caution you, uh, Brandon, because it is a fine line, because you don't know if your database has you know, someone that is a, a, also a licensed agent too, right? You just never know, or they have a significant other that is, and it's questionable. So it's a fine line, in my opinion. I probably, I think it falls back into the public marketing, falls into your database. This property is registered. Yeah, wow. So that's registered. So coming soon, marketing it is allowed. So if you put the property on the MLS, it's in there as a coming soon, then yes, you know, now it's exposed. Now it is uh, uh, the, the ability to uh, see it amongst other agents. Then yes, you, you're able and capable of uh, doing marketing, okay? Uh, obviously a commission is offered, uh, no days on market. So it doesn't impact you. So even though you write it for 21 days, as soon as it comes active, it's zero days on market and a cumulative days on market is zero, zero. So that's the advantage. And this is the reason CRMLS went with the coming soon because coming soon wasn't part of our part of our process three, four years ago. It, it started because of these agents wanted to uh, take advantage 
of uh, trying to get buyers before it actually goes active, trying to, you know, find and identify, you know, buyers on that case. So this is where coming soon came into play. So it's a way to promote it. But with that, you still cannot do any showings. Okay, no showings. No showings. Um, <clears throat> so you got to be very careful. Correct. So so 20, 21 days is the maximum. And the, obviously the form is required. Who can see coming soon listing? All CRMLS users. So photos, in my understanding, when it comes to CRMLS, when it comes to coming soon, it, it only shows one photo. But we, if you're a member of CLAW, okay, if you're a member of CLAW, it allows you to show all of them, two different, two different MLSs, so they don't, they don't follow the same rules. So if you're a member of CLAW, the MLS, and you have it as a coming soon, guess what? They'll, you'll be able to see all the photos. If you're a member of CRMLS, it only shows one photo, which is kind of strange, in my opinion. I think it should be uh, a position that it should allow all the photos that you upload, but CRMLS, for some odd reason, only has one as a coming soon. Yes, Ashley. You had, but was the consumer able to, the consumer able to see all that? Yeah. yeah. Probably, yeah, probably on your end, but other agents in the public will only see one photo. That may change, um, but for the for the time being right now, CR Malin only shows on a coming soon one image. So you want to pick the, the best uh, photo, you know, to promote it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you could. 12 and one, right? <laughs> 12 and one, but... <laughs> yeah so but remember also on a coming soon you don't have to ride and and have it 21 days mm -hmm. after five days coming soon you decide and the seller decide let's let's just put it active you can you know do it at five days seven days uh but remember once you have it coming soon it doesn't give you 21 days. So if you put it back to coming soon, whatever remainder of the 21 days is all you have. And then once you you uh, uh, do all of your 21 days, then that's it. You, you cannot. It, it does. Yeah. If you don't if you don't do anything and let it ride for 21 days, it'll automatically uh, convert it into an active listing. And the good thing is that that's not a violation. What's interesting when it's an auto sold, it is a violation, but as in coming soon to active, it's not. It's just the weirdest thing. Yeah. So when it's supposed to, like, so okay, right? Not as an auto sold. They never let it go. Auto never, never let it go auto sold. No. So this is the okay. So that's a good question, Tammy. Thank you for sharing that. So. If you do have a listing, right, and you know your typical is 30-day 30, uh, 30 escrow, right? And you know that the uh, escrow closing date is, let's say, um, April 15th, right? <clears throat> and it's getting close to April 15th, but you know for a fact it's not going to close on April 15th. You want to go into your MLS portal and then extend the close of sale, the close of sale, and just do it as a buffer, Okay. It doesn't have to be exact, but just give yourself enough room because what happens is if you let it go auto sold, that's a violation. Now, CRMLS allows a window to correct it, but then now you got to go through, you got to send them the estimated uh, closing statement. You got to go through so many stuff just to prove that what day it closed and what amount. They won't just take your word and say, yeah, I closed for this. No, now you have to bring in the, the settlement package, email it to them. So to answer your question, uh, Tammy, the best approach is to give yourself a gap from the time you close, right? So if you know it's the, the 15th of April, I would say, you know, give yourself to the 25th because you can always close it even before that time. That's your safe haven. That will save you from being in violation. And what happens with a lot of agents that, Miss the email, I get notified. I on the day that it's supposed to, I'll send an, an email to the agent. 
hey, please don't let it go out of sold. You know, please make sure you update it today. And most agents respond back and say, yes, I mean, I got it. I'm going to go ahead and extend it. We're not closing today. Thank you for the reminder. MLS uh, typically is good in sending those reminders, but sometimes it may go into your spam and junk mail. You may not see it. You just got to be very diligent because if you're not, <clears throat> after uh, 48 or 72 hours, then it's an automatic find. And I think the fine is 100 or 150 or even up to $500. Yeah. So, Ashley. No, no, 21 it is. Yeah. So any, any questions on the difference between coming soon and a, a register listing, right? A register listing, you cannot uh, promote it. You're just registering the property that you do have a, an agreement in place, but you're not doing anything. Uh, that's correct. No, that's totally, totally different. All right, so creating a listing uh, register. All right, so from your dashboard under your uh, CRMLS resources, uh, you'll click the listing toolbox icon, which is this right here. It used to be a lot easier where as soon as you, you know how you add a listing, the first page, what, what, uh, what category are you going to put it at? Uh, active, pending, and so on and so forth. But then there was a section there that says register the listing. They removed that because I wanted to get clarity too. I reached out to compliance uh, sometime last week because I was going to be teaching on this. And I says, I remember that it used to, oh yeah, they removed it. Now you have to go through the channels and the resources in order for you to register the uh, the listing. Okay. What's inside my Huh? So the one looks like sunshine and then listing toolbox. That's what it says right here. So this is what it's going to say, listing toolbox. Okay, so, oops, wrong one. Okay, so then select register the listing on the left, end, uh, left side, which says right here, register listing. Then uh, the new button to create the new uh, registered listing. And then on the top, it'll have a little green section that says new. That's where you're going to click. That is correct. Yep. And then you'll fill on the required field, any and other pertinent fields in each section which what type of property, is it residential? Um, what's the listing price, the listing contract date, and then the start, start marketing date, and then the expiration date is what you'll uh, have to do. And you'll upload it. You're 10, you're 10 steps ahead of me, but yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I know you are. Enter the required listing or co-listings information. So if it's you or someone else that is co-listing with you, uh, that way you're protected that you did what you were supposed to, to be in compliance that you put in your ID. And if you're listening with someone else, make sure that you're also because that person will also be in violation if they're not registered as well. Okay. Make sure they're on the listing agreement. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Click save on the bottom of the uh, confirmation and uh, confirmation uh, sent to the MLS using the green arrow sent to MLS. So it's going to show something like this. I don't know if you can see it. Here. But right here, you'll get a confirmation sending listing to the MLS confirming that you uh, registered the uh, property okay, right here. And it says conf uh, confirm uh, sending listing to the MLS by selecting send to the MLS. You acknowledge that all information entered to register your listing is accurate and that you have signed the listing agreement with the seller. When you click send to the MLS, all information used to register your listing will go to the MLS system for further input and publication. This action cannot be undue. Okay. 
You will receive a confirmation message that you uh, will indicate that the system has sent your registration uh, registered listing to the MLS. We have sent you registered listing to the MLS system where you normally find incomplete listings that may vary depending on the MLS system you use. And that concludes the process. Questions, feedbacks regarding registered listings. Yes, Tammy. Okay. Uh huh. Your clients can be doing a re-all over the next several months. What happens when you put your sign on the fence? That's a very good question. So that's that's marketing. Nice. That is marketing, and I would caution you: if you uh, have a listing agreement, <clears throat> then you want to register it, right? or have a seller excluding it from the MLS into a certain date that it's gonna go active. The register part will not, because if you know registering the property means that you're not gonna do any promotions to it. That includes a for sale sign. That's a marketing, you cannot do that. Even if you're a party to the investment? If you're- What uh, that also the agent? No, because remember, you're an agent. Yeah, you're the principal owner. You can put a sign if you're the owner, but it cannot say anything with Keller Williams. You could say it's a for sale by owner and have your information, no license information, no Keller Williams information, then that's perfectly fine. Because I can articulate my position, uh, Brandon. Hey, I'm the owner. I'm putting this that it's going to eventually be on the market. But as a real estate agent, no, you cannot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which is a great way to get listed. That's right. <laughs> Good deal. Um, any question? Other questions? Awesome. Anyone on Zoom have any questions? All right. Well, that uh, that concludes our uh, contract class. If you do have any additional questions for me, please uh, either text me, call me, or send me an email. Uh, this is recorded, so if you want to see it, it should be in, two, uh, in our uh, Zoom um, YouTube uh, channel, okay? Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful uh, afternoon and a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Simon.